So this is the next part I'm working on. This is the the uh, uh, the pump and the valve assembly that I've uh, come up with for this. Um, from here is going to be where it comes in from the tank. I got a filter that was on this pump with the sprayer, and then here's the pump. And then from here, I'm going. This is going to be the uh, where it goes down into the actual spray bar and then here's a regulator with pressure gauge and then from here it's going to circulate back into the tank um, so to set the pressure you'll just tur turn the regulator valve just like any sprayer uh, to adjust the pressure that I wanted at and then here's obviously the little wiring tab but I'm mounting it to this hood it's got little rubber bushings on here I had this thing already pre-set up but I didn't take into account for the how wide this thing was actually going to be and long. Uh, I had to make this longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, I originally wanted it to be just to here or shorter, but the only way I could do it with the stuff that Tractor Supply actually had in stock was to add two T's here instead of just one. It would have been nice to have been able to got a T with a quarter inch screw uh, insert in it just to screw the gauge down into. And then I wouldn't have had that extra two inches or whatever that is out through there. But in this size T, they don't, I don't even think they offer one with a quarter inch adapter. It was the larger T's that had them like I have on my sprayer. But uh, there, was, there wasn't no way I could downsize it to fit this little pump. So kind of what I had to work with if you're wondering why I made it so long and god awful it's because that's all I had for what they had in stock and in the store that's what I had available to me to actually work with and god help if I'd had to order it because it would have been a month before they would even got it in and believe me I know so that's the setup I've got so I'm going to tighten these screws down I've drip tapped and drilled them uh, just took a regular punch, tap punch, and then knocked uh, some dents in there and then drilled it out with the drill over there. But uh, now I'm going to tighten these up. to mount a cord up here. Don't pay any attention to this. This was from another idea I had where I was trying to make a homemade um, a homemade foamer before I got my GPS and the problem I ran into was I couldn't find a pump like I needed to make the foam and by the time I bought the pump it was pretty well pointless. So I give up on that. Changing the cap out, I got another cap out there for another tank I'm going to put on this one to make it look better. But uh, I do need a port here and I don't want to use this because if I use this then every time I take the cap off to fill it up I'm going to have to uh, pull the hose off and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right here and I'm going to put this port in for uh, re the return.
Bigger tanks a little more aggravating because you can't get into them real easy depending on where you put it. But they're uh, nothing to be afraid of if you hadn't ever done one. They just got two rubber washers on each side of the nut where it tightens down. You just tighten it down with a big set of channel locks, and there you go. I got my port for my tank. Now we got to run hoses. Okay, um, this is what I've got. This is the system I've come up with. All right, the tank is on here. It's a 15 gallon tank. Should do around close to nine, a thousand, uh, close to a thousand bales with a 15 gallon tank. Uh, if I feel like I need a bigger tank, I'll. I've got another tank I'll stick on here later. Uh, that's a, a lot of, probably twice the size of this one. Uh, I wanted to try to use this one because it's smaller. makes it easier to see the Coons uh, system behind us. And the more than I figure we'll use this, that's all we need anyway. I just strapped it on. I am going to be trying to find me some black straps instead of these green ones. I just had the green ones for now. That'll work. I just strapped it on to the, around the tank to hold it to this frame I made. The pump I mounted directly to the cover for the uh, the plunger arm. Um, up here is the hose that runs from the tank to the pump. It goes through a filter into the pump, back through. Then you have uh, this is your down hose to your um, to your uh, sprayer bar underneath. Then it goes pressure gauge. Then you got your regulator right here. From the regulator, it goes back into the tank to recirculate. This is a continuous running pump. Uh, you do not want a shutoff pump once it reaches so much pressure and cuts off. You need a pump that's built to run continuously if you do this. That's an electric pump. Um, this one here is what was on a sprayer that I had. It was a constant running pump. It didn't shut off. We do have another sprayer my dad does that he's got. It's a little one smaller than this one. Once it reaches so much pressure, it automatically turns off. You can't use these on one of these systems. Uh, you'll burn it up. Um, but to adjust your pressure and your flow, you just adjust the regulator. Later, I'm going to be adding an electric uh, regulator to this like I've got on my sprayer. But for right now, like I said, I'm trying to get by as cheap as I can. Um, and I'm just going to go with the manual. Uh, down hose goes down through here. Here's your sprayer bar up under here. Let's see if I can't get any of the close. See, it's just got regular tips on it. Um, the tips on this thing, I have yellow in it right now. They're way too big. Uh, I actually have got the charts for the Harvest Tech uh, system, which is the same, which is who builds the system for Agco, uh, the Agco hay preserve system which is what i copied the bar off of if you're building one of these tanks to do, make one of these hay preserves all that matters is the amount of tips you have and uh the sprayer bar system and the pressure that you have uh that's how you set you regulate your flow uh anything else you can make it everything you want to it doesn't really matter uh, but that's how you control your flow the more tips you add the smaller tips you're going to have to have uh, the Agco system had two tips. I looked at pictures of theirs on there with a bar just like that that runs between. Theirs actually has a wider bar with all three different size tips because you use three different size tips uh, for each moisture level you go up. There's three levels. Uh, I think it's from 16 to 23 and then 23 to 20, uh, like five or something like that and then from there they have another one that goes all the way up to 30. Uh, for each level of the amount of application you have to make you have to change the tips out. Uh, I'm never going to bail hay over the 23 because once you go over that 
have to put a lot more of this stuff per ton of hay. Uh, and that's when your, your uh, costs really go up. Uh, it, it doubles from the... If you go over 23% moisture, it doubles in co uh, the amount of hay preservative you have to put down per ton. Uh, and that really jacks your cost up. Uh, the first one, most of the system I've seen, you're looking at a quarter and under uh, per bale, which is a lot. But if you, with a year like this year, you can either park the baler and not bale no hay, or you can do this and bale hay. Uh, so that's kind of your options. That's one reason why I'm doing this now. Uh, I kind of wanted one in the springtime when we start our hay season starts early or like late April. So sometimes it can be a bit of a pill to get the hay dried out during that time of year. Uh, so that's kind of one reason why I wanted this, but the way this year has been, I need it now where normally I wouldn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, they, they also come with three nozzles when they have it mounted on a bar down there. It has basically what I've got times three. And then the uh, monitor as it goes through the hay and senses how much moisture is in the hay through the moisture sensor on the baler, it will uh, change the nozzles automatically. It'll spray more if it needs to or less and go from the first to the second to the third nozzle depending on how wet the hay is. Um, it does it all automatic and cuts it off and everything else. But those systems, you're looking at probably $2,000 or more for one of those. This system, if you bought this system straight from Harvest Tech, you're looking at probably fourteen hundred bucks for an on-off switch system um, and everything you see. But it comes with also an electric regulator done on, uh, and then it'll have the on-off switch. That's basically the only difference. Um, but I had a good friend give me the the charts for the Harvest Tech system. If you build one of these, build it off, find somebody who has the book to one of these uh, applicator systems, whether it's Harvest Tech, another brand, uh, get the uh, book that they have off of it, build your system off of the amount of nozzles that, that you need that that book shows. Then you're probably gonna have to order the tips from the company that built that system to get your flow right. Uh, they're not just standard tips uh they are a lot smaller than your normal sprayer tips if you run one nozzle and only one nozzle you can buy the tips that you'll need at like tractor supply or something the yellow green and i think it's orange tips but if you're running two you're gonna have to go through an actual applicator applicator building or the company that makes an applicator to get the smaller tips they don't offer those normally at like trash supply or online or something like that uh, you've got to go through them to get those um, i'm getting mine through agco uh, the ones i got in right now are putting them out way too much and that's the one of the problems but you have to have those calculation charts in order to calculate this stuff um i had a good friend give them to me i don't know if he wants me to tell his name but i really appreciate it man uh no dehaven he also sent me some more charts uh really thank you to you too i uh, really appreciate that both of y'all that's really going to help me out here and save me a lot of money um just getting these but uh that's the system that's a you just control the flow by adjusting the regular regulator just like uh that and once you figure out your tons and how many bales your ba uh, or your tonnage uh you can just adjust your pressures to the pounds per minute it, on the charts, it'll tell you for the nozzles you have, what well, you need to have your pressure set at to cover that percentage range from 16 to 20 something percent if you just wanna do the lesser one like I'm gonna do. Uh, the wiring harness, I wired this thing, run it up into the cab. Uh, for now, I only have a on off switch in here, just like this. It's just like the regular one that comes with one of those ATV sprayers I stuck in here. Um, this winter, I'm going to be making a box with a control switch to adjust the pressure with electric regulator to go on here like I have on my sprayer. And then I'm also going to make, I'm going to put a toggle switch for on and off to go in the cab. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to buy a 
moisture reader to go on the bale chamber on this uh, baler. They just bolt into the inside of it and then you run the wire to a cab. They come with a monitor that'll show you and then I'll basically have the same system that Harvest Tech sells uh, for $1,400 um, then in this tractor and on this baler. And it'll do the exact same thing. Um, so that's that's my plan anyway. Uh, if this, if I don't have to get out and adjust this regulator that often, probably gonna dump the idea of having the electric regulator. It won't be worth running all that crap, but I am gonna get the moisture sensor to go on the chamber. Um, and we're gonna definitely do that. Uh, but you do have to get three sets of tips for this system. Uh, so that way, if you do go over the 20 something percent, you'll have the tips to go on. I mean, if you don't want to buy them, you don't have to, but you will need at least the, the first step of tips to even use this thing. Um, but uh, another thing that's very important is your coverage from one side to the other. Hey, still got some water in it. I'll flip it on and uh, show y'all it working while we're here. I know this video is getting long if you made it this far. Thank you for watching. Um, there you go. I don't know if y'all can see it or not. There they are. Uh, oh, it's nearly out of water. But they're spraying, but when it's got water, let's see, it just ran out. When it's got water in it, it covers, you want it to cover the entire intake throat that the hay's going in, wherever it's spraying, where it's a, no matter what baler it is, it has to cover the entire intake throat where the fork's at that pulls the hay in. Not the pickup mouth, but the intake. Because uh, you got to cover all the hay if you don't want it to mold. Um, and it defeats the purpose. That's the system. Uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. I hope y'all enjoy this video. These systems are not hard to make. I mean, they're pretty simple. You got a, a pump, a regulator, a pressure valve, and basically just a sprayer bar it mounts underneath there. Uh, and if you got a tank, if you got a ATV tank laying around, with a continuous pump on it, say yours doesn't shut off when you're you're using it, you can bait one of these for not that much money. Uh, I mean, only thing I had to buy was these plumbing parts from here to here. That's it. Everything else I had here, because we got all the sprayers and everything, uh, we constantly got parts for them in case we break them or something. I had everything else here that I needed. Uh, so, I mean... It's not that expensive. The steel I had laying around to build it. Uh, if you're like me and you do welding on your own stuff and you got steel laying around, you can easily make one of these up to go on your baler. The problem is, though, before you start anything, you need to get the charts you need and you need to get the tips you need and figure out how many tips you need and then figure out how, how you're going to build your bar. After that, once you get the calculation charts and the bar... Um, the sprayer bar tips, you can ask a friend if you know somebody's got one of these. Uh, you can make all that for nearly nothing because that's what you're paying all that money for is for the calculations. Um, but other than that, I mean, there's nothing to them. They're basically a, a four-wheeler sprayer. That's all it is. It's a four-wheeler sprayer. Um, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.